What's up guys? The original plan for today's video was to do a review of this gun right here, but as I got deeper into the script, I started to predict that there's a certain question that might arise. As you all know, I've been running the M&P 2.0 four and a quarter inch, which is these guns back here, for about a year and some change now. I've probably got around 7,000 rounds through this gun, and it's been my EDC for majority of the time. But I recently acquired the five inch variant in September, and I've been running this thing as often as I can. If I had to estimate how many rounds I've run through this, I'd say it's probably north of 1400. And mind you, that's just in two months. But the question that I thought I'd address alongside my thoughts on this gun is does barrel length matter in a pistol application? I don't see this topic being discussed very often, and after doing my own research, I can see why. So this video will kind of be divided into two parts. The first part, I'm gonna review the five inch because that's something you guys are very interested in and you guys have been demanding this almost every video since my original MMP review. And then the second part will be going into the nuances between choosing barrel length for defensive needs and applications. So how does the MMP 5 inch stack up? This firearm is definitely one of my favorite guns that I've ever owned. It does everything I need it to do and at a higher level than I was expecting. As a matter of fact, the MMP line as a whole has won me over at this point. I owned Glocks before converting over to Smith and I can honestly say I'm okay with that change. Previously, I had a 43X, a 19, and a Glock 45. And all three of these guns were exceptional and you can't go wrong with having them. Glocks are amazing standalone platforms and I will never knock them on this channel. They do their job and they do their job well. They have a track record that has proven their durability and I never had a single issue with them. My switch to Smith was more out of curiosity than anything. But now being in the MMP ecosystem for an extended period of time, I'm starting to see the similarities between Smith and Glock. One being durability. Like I mentioned before, I have about 1400 rounds through this gun in just two months and it's honestly because I've been going to a lot of matches, like my local shooting matches and competitions. And this thing has run amazing. I don't really clean my guns more than once or twice a year. I just keep them lubricated. With that being said, not too many issues. Now I did clean this gun one time since I bought it. And I want you guys to take this next piece of information at your own discretion. When I bought this gun, I didn't clean it right away. I took it straight out of the box and headed to the range. And within the first 100 rounds, I had two failures to feed. I shot about 250 rounds that day, and then I took it home to take a closer look. My four and a quarter inch MMP never malfunctioned, even straight from the factory. And my carry gun has about 5,000 rounds through it at this point. When I took a closer look, I saw the gun has some weird lubricant or grease all over it, and it was very, very thick. And it felt like it was a bit thicker than I typically like. So I cleaned the gun, removed all the grease, then I applied my hops gun oil, which is my favorite gun oil for the price. And from then on, I had zero issues. Many people say you should have zero malfunction straight out of the box. And I agree, you shouldn't. But I truly believe this malfunction was forced by either a low quality grease or at least an outdated grease. It literally felt like Vaseline and it had no lubrication qualities. So if you decide this gun isn't reliable due to my experience, then I fully respect that. But I personally think this gun is reliable and I trust my life to it 100%. Because since that 250 rounds, it's run 1,150 rounds effortlessly. And that's with less than occasional application of gun oil. So it's been pretty dry, but it still goes bang no matter what. Next, I wanna talk about the weight of this gun. With everything removed, this gun is about 29 ounces. This gun feels very balanced. Ignore the weapon mounted light, obviously that's gonna make it front heavy, but when I shoot this gun without the light on, it feels very, very balanced in my hand. I feel like with the added weight, as opposed to the four and a quarter inch, when I go from target to target transitions, I feel like it's a very smooth track. Again, it's just my perception of it. Obviously, training plays a huge role, but with my four and a quarter, I feel like I'm a lot faster, but then with this, I feel like I'm a lot smoother, if that makes any sense. And with it feeling so balanced, I feel like it plays a part in the recoil impulse department as well. Nine millimeter has very little recoil, in my opinion. It's a very easy round to tame if you apply the right fundamentals. My four and a quarter inch is a pretty soft shooter, but I really thought going from the four and a quarter inch to the five inch was gonna feel negligible. But as you can tell from me making this video, I was wrong. Though we are shooting the same caliber and the same exact brand of nine millimeter, Blazer Brass, 
the recoil impulse is noticeably different. I want to say it feels softer and less mechanical as the four and a quarter inch. Again, both have a very pleasing feel and recoil impulse, but the five inch to me seems to be like a smoother and softer impulse out of the two. My thoughts are due to the extended barrel, there's more slide material, and in return, that absorbs more of the snap. But I can definitely see a slight difference when going for follow-up shots between the five inch and the four and a quarter. I feel like it returns to zero a lot faster than the five inch, and I think it's because the shorter slide has less of a travel distance. But regardless, training is gonna make the biggest difference. I have the Apex Tactical Trigger installed, but the OEM trigger on this gun is surprisingly good. And if I'm being honest, I don't think you need the Apex Trigger for this gun. The new flat face MMP triggers have a very positive break and reset point. I really only threw in the Apex Trigger due to familiarity. It's what I run on my other MMP, and I'm a huge proponent of trying to keep my training and carry setups somewhat similar. I even have both triggers set to the same spring weight. Some of you gun enthusiasts may notice that my version of the gun does not have a thumb safety. The 5 inch FDE model only comes with the ambidextrous thumb safety, and I'm just not a fan of safeties, so I removed it. And like I said, consistency throughout all my platforms is a must. This firearm also shares the same grip module as the four and a quarter inch. So when it comes to concealment, you can expect it to carry very similar. I have noticed with there being more slide under the belt line with this gun, it does conceal slightly better than the four and a quarter inch. And that's basic physics just coming into play with that one. All right, so we talked about some of the pros of going with the larger version of the MMP, but this still begs the question, does barrel length matter when talking about small arms? If you don't want to stick around and watch the rest of the video, then I'll save you some time. I personally don't think it plays as big of a role when talking about handguns in most instances. When comparing barrel lengths and rifle applications, there are definitely more variables changed when shortening or lengthening a barrel. In the pistol world, the differences are so minute. I consider pistol distances to be in the one to 40-ish yard range, but this is the range I believe is the most practical for most people. If we're talking about self-defense, which is within a three to 10 yard distance on average, I think barrel length isn't the dominant factor when determining who will be on top, training will. But if you're looking to acquire more marksmanship in a competitive aspect, then barrel length can become something you look at more closely. And again, it depends on your personal application. If you're shooting irons, then having a longer sight radius will definitely assist in accuracy. But if you're shooting a red dot, you have unlimited eye relief on a single plane, regardless of how long the barrel is. And as you guys know, I'm all about carrying full-size guns. Going forward, the information I'm about to give you guys is only gonna address going from two platforms that are very similar. So the four and a quarter inch barrel and the five inch barrel, and the difference in velocity. When going between these guns, the velocity difference is not too drastic. And we're talking about handguns. Does 50, 100, even 150 FPS really gonna make a difference at seven yards? I don't think so. Listen, for most people, this stuff is just fluff. What you'll be able to do at five yards with nine millimeter will pretty much be dang similar across both platforms. If you're rocking a four and a quarter inch MMP and you're curious and wanna go to the five inch, I say go for it, I did. But just don't expect a huge performance difference. You will feel a change, but it's not on a drastic level that I see some people proclaim in other videos. Everything comes down to training. So make sure you're shooting at the bare minimum once a month, or if you can do more, that's awesome. But try not to go a whole month without running some ammo through your gun or guns, even if it's just one box of nine millimeter. If you guys have any questions or food for thought, make sure you comment down below and I'll try to respond to many, as many of your questions as I can as soon as this goes up. I typically try to answer as many questions or comments I can during the first 24 hour period of a video going up. After that, I start working on the next project and I don't really comment on that video anymore. So if you wanna get a conversation going, your best bet is commenting on day one. All right guys, that's all I have for you today. I'll catch you in the next one.